Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher, and you join me today in cloudy San Diego, California, behind the wheel of the all-new 2023 Lexus RZ 450e. This is Lexus's first standalone mass-produced EV. This is powered by two electric motors. Combined power output is 313 horsepower and 321 pound-feet of torque. With the 20 inch wheels that are on this car, we get about 196 miles of range. And today we're gonna to take you on our first impressions drive of this Lexus RZ. But before we do that, we're going to take you for a walk around, show you what it looks like from the outside, and then we'll take it on a short drive and I will give you my thoughts on it. Apologize for the wind. It's very unlike Southern California today. Of course, the one day of the week where it is cloudy and horrible is the day that I'm out here driving this brand new Lexus. So this RZ is a totally new car for Lexus. They've never made their own EV before. Of course, Toyota has the BZ4X, Subaru has the Solterra, but Lexus hasn't had anything yet. So here it is here. This one is finished in ether, the only real color offered in the lineup, kind of a light blue. Lexus told us that it is inspired from a cloud-free sky, ironic enough for today. And um, if you're thinking, well, that kind of looks familiar, it's because it does. This is essentially the same size as the RX. It's got the same wheelbase and pretty much every dimension is RX-ish. The only thing you'll notice that's slightly different is the hood. Since it's a little bit lower, we've got a slightly lower sloping hood. And then the back is kind of coupish which is neat. I think the back looks a bit like an Aston Martin DBX, and don't come for me in the comments. This is becoming kind of a trend with these SUVs. Of course, we've got the Cayenne Coupe, we've got the BMW X6, and of course, uh, higher-end things like the Aston Martin DBX. But honestly, in the looks department, it kind of does it for me. I was looking at photos of this thing, and I wasn't really the biggest fan, but now seeing it in person, it's one of those cars that looks better in the flesh than it does in photos. So like I mentioned earlier, we have the optional 20 inch wheels on this car. You are able to get 18 inch wheels. In fact, they come standard. And with that car, you get 220 miles of range. So if you pay extra for the 20 inch wheels, you lose 24 miles of electric driving range. If Charlie from Daily Motor is watching, he is cringing thinking about that right now. But these 20 inch wheels are quite neat. So we have an eight inch wheel in the front and a nine and a half inch wheel in the back. So it's actually a staggered setup with this Lexus RZ. For tires, we're running a set of Dunlops, which is kind of uncommon to have in uh, production cars nowadays to have some standard Dunlop tires, but we do. They look to be kind of a performance all season tire. They're kind of aggressive, but they are still nice and quiet and you will uh, be able to experience that once we are out on the road. So this Lexus RZ is available in two different trim levels, the premium and the luxury. Today we're in the premium. I don't know if we'll get a chance to go out in the luxury, but uh, this premium has a couple of options that bring it pretty much up to par with the luxury. Let's go ahead, hop in, get out. Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's take a look back here at the trunk space and then we'll get you guys out of the wind because I know you probably don't enjoy listening to that. So pretty good space back here in the RZ. The floor's a little high. But that's okay, it's actually at a pretty good level to take things in and out, and it's flat as well from the back of the car, so you don't have to reach in or out. And underneath the floor, we have even more storage. You can see our charging cable down here, just a level one charger to pretty much plug and play no matter where you live or stay. And lifting this up, we can see we have even more additional room there, a couple more cubbies back under this initial floor piece to give you just a little bit more storage. Button up here to go ahead and shut the boot. Okay, let's hop into the back seat. Similar, or in fact, the same door handle style that you get on the new Lexus RX. And hopping back here, it is, you were just engulfed in Lexusness. I am so happy that this new interior in the RZ being that it's an EV, it still feels like a Lexus. That was a big thing that I was worried about here for uh, this RZ, and luckily they have delivered. We'll talk a little bit more about the interior when we hop up front, but I wanna talk about the back seat. So we've got a good amount of leg room back here. As I said, same wheelbase as the RX, so you do have that length and you have a good amount of room behind the driver's seat. I'm five foot 11, this is adjusted for my driving position, and I've got plenty of room back here. Additionally, 
We've got a pull down armrest with cup holders here. And we have an extra two inches of headroom over the Lexus RX. And that has to do with this standard panorama roof that we have in the Lexus RZ. So the actual roof itself doesn't, I mean, it sits a little higher, but you can see here we have quite a bit of room with these cutouts for this panorama glass roof. So kind of neat. This is standard, uh, but they also have an option, which this car does not look like it has to do the thing that the Toyota Venza does, where it kind of whites out the top here and makes it so less sun comes in. Lexus will also sell you some covers for the sunroof if you don't want to have permanent glass, but it does not come with them. You have to install them and kind of slip them in here and clip them in. This is as standard as it comes. This is how the base RZ looks. So kind of neat. Other amenities back here, we've got vents, we've got two USB-C ports and a traditional uh, charger down, car charger port down there. Otherwise though, not too much going on back here. It's nice and cozy. The actual seat is nice and squishy and um, you sit far back enough and it all feels quite nice. We'll take a look under the hood and the charge port. No power release for the charge port. It just opens up there and we have a door for level three charging. While on the topic of level three charging, definitely worth noting that this only charges up to 150 kilowatts. So some of its competitors can charge up to 300, 350, whatever the highest one is. Uh, for example, I took an Ionic 5 on a road trip last year and it charged so fast. Being that this is a little bit of a smaller battery, um, 71.4 kilowatt hours. It doesn't take as long as you may think. They're claiming from 10 to 80% takes about 30 minutes. So do with that information what you will. Definitely not class leading, but not horrible. Under the hood here, a very similar hood prop to my 2003 Lexus IS300. Take it off the hood and pop it down here. No hood struts on the RZ probably because Lexus figures that you will never be opening this yourself, so why waste money on some hood struts? And honestly, I kind of agree with them, but what about our lovely Lexus technicians that have to be working under here? They've got to operate a hood prop, but whatever. This is a large unit of power. It's an electric motor, and it takes up the entire engine bay. We don't get a frunk, but as you can see, we do have a regular traditional car battery here if you were to want to jump somebody or are, or if you need to be jumped you are able to do so with that. Also notice that this is a mechanical bonnet. There was no power latch to open it. So if your car does die, you are still able to get access to all of these things, which is pretty nice. We've got a coolant tank here. The battery is coolant cooled. So you've got that tank there. And also here, a couple different types of coolant in here, uh, some for the HVAC system and some to cool the battery. Okay, how did I do this now? Come on, Chris, you own you own a Lexus, you should know how to do this. Also available, a lot of different things available with this car. You can have a two-toed paint job, which uh, covers the hood here in black, and also this front waterfall style, not grill, but more so just front bumper. Of course, we don't really have the big grill on this Lexus RZ, but we do still have that Lexus flare here and it's very very recognizable if you miss the l badge there on the front you can certainly tell this is a lexus coming at you by this very familiar design language all of you marvel fans would have seen this car in the black panther wakanda forever movie and no we are not in wakanda today we are in california but this lexus rz should perform just the same okay Hop it up here to the front, and I want to get one thing right out of the way. So this Lexus RZ is actually available with two different steering wheel configurations. And you may be wondering, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, this one has just the traditional steering wheel. It's round as steering wheels are. But you can also have what Lexus calls steer by wire, which is a thin rectangular style steering wheel. And I don't want to say the Y word, but you all know a certain American manufacturer that makes something quite similar. And that is essentially what you get here in this Lexus RZ. I'll go ahead and say it. You essentially get a yoke steering wheel. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw in some footage from that a little bit later on once we're out on the drive, because I have driven the steer by wire Lexus RZ. So we'll get into the steering a little bit more later, but let's talk about this interior design. So 
It's very simple. It's very minimalist. It's kind of what we all expected. It's kind of what everything is turning into. But I'm happy to report that Lexus has done a good job with materials in this car. They are not using any leather. They are not using any wood in this interior. Everything, as far as I know, is vegan in this car. And despite that, everything is still very soft and supple. Even the steering wheel material, everything you feel in here is very Lexus-ish still, which is something that I was a little bit worried about. I should have never doubted Lexus to, uh, you know, cheap out on interior material materials or anything like that. But even the materials down here by your right knee, very soft. The door panel material, very soft. We do have a couple different interior color choices. I'm slightly disappointed that I'm in a car with this gray interior because there is also a very nice beige and a kind of cognac saddle color as well that you're able to have in the RZ. And also a blue, there's a dark blue as well that you can have, which is quite nice. We've got this big, I believe 13 inch touchscreen. If it's a different number, I'll put that here, but I think it is around 13 inches. And we're familiar with this. We get the system in pretty much everything new now. It debuted in the NX, we have it in the RX, and we are also starting to get it in a lot of the Toyota cars, like or in trucks like the um, Tundra and the Sequoia. So pretty familiar infotainment system. We won't go too in depth with this. The only thing that you need to know about in this infotainment system are all of these shortcuts and drive modes. So we know with this infotainment, you have frequently used things over here on the left. You can scroll over to get to your more standard menus here. And in here we have normal, eco, sport, and custom drive modes. And one more scroll gets you to range mode. As I mentioned earlier, this is a dual motor electric vehicle. Range mode will basically cut off all your climate, everything like that, to give you the most range possible. As it says, range mode, that makes sense, right? But the coolest thing it does is it cuts out the front motor and makes this thing rear wheel drive only. So if you want to do some drifting, you can go into range mode, not actually. Um, <laughs> but if you need to maximize your range, you are able to cut down to just one of these electric motors with range mode. We're gonna go back into normal mode today to start our drive. And uh, well, I think that'll be just about it to get on the road. We've got a camera review mirror here in this Lexus RZ, quite nice. A beige headliner, and I already showed you guys this panorama roof. We've been sitting around enough. Let's go for a drive. So here's the shifter. It looks like a pretty normal dial shifter, but it does not necessarily function like one. You push down and over to put yourself into reverse. And just like a second generation Toyota Prius, it beeps at you. I'm sure there's a way to turn this off. There might not be. I haven't found anything here in settings to do so. Let's see if maybe it would stop if you ask it to. Ugh, okay, I can't find it in there. Anyways, down and to the right puts you into drive. Simply pushing down on the dial puts you into neutral and park is a button in front of the dial shifter. So uh, pretty simple setup here. It's pretty intuitive. It's got this nice grippy material around. It's just made of plastic. It's, it's not metal or anything like that, but uh, opens up the cabin area a little bit more. It makes it feel more open and airy in this section. So, uh, you know, no problems with this shifter. Cool. All right, we're in normal mode. Uh, let's go ahead and take this Lexus RZ 450E for a drive. Right off the bat, you'll notice how quiet this thing is. And of course, you know, it's a Lexus, so it should be. But there's always this in the back of your mind with a new generation of cars, especially when companies go over to making EVs, you think, are they going to keep the same philosophy as the gas cars? And uh, I'm happy to report that this still feels like a Lexus. This car is actually built in the same factory in Japan as the LC500 and previously the LFA. So it's made by people that do definitely know what they're doing. Um, we'll, we'll definitely give them that. Give them credit where credit's due. And boy, does this thing feel well put together. There are no shakes, there are no shimmies, there are no rattles in this interior. Like I said earlier, everything you touch feels fantastic. And overall, just a really, really nice effort here from Lexus as far as the interior goes in this RZ450E. We're gonna do an acceleration. <laughs> I 
Lexus claims a zero to 60 time in around five seconds, which reading the spec sheet, you wouldn't necessarily believe that with the 313 horsepower. But this thing boogies off the line. It definitely gets going and gets the job done. You can definitely feel power fall off around 60 miles per hour as things start to even out. Um, but we do certainly have uh, enough power. Steering feels really good. It's just light enough to where you still feel like you're in a luxury car, but uh, it's not so light that you can steer it with your pinky. It's also not so light that you don't have any feedback. You get a good amount of feedback here from this RZ. Yeah, I'm really impressed. It's communicative and it's, it's quite light, which is exactly what this car should have. I would not change anything about this steering. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and cut to some footage in that RZ with the steer by wire. Interrupting myself here in the middle of the review to show you guys this steer by wire system in the RZ. So we only have a limited amount of time in this car. That's why the whole review doesn't take place in this steer by wire vehicle, but let's go ahead and walk through how this works. So we're gonna start here in this parking lot and then we're gonna go for a very short loop around the highway here. We'll do a couple of U-turns and uh, we'll kind of wrap up my thoughts on this steer by wire system. We don't necessarily have a name yet for this device here, this steering wheel or yoke style wheel, if you will, but we will soon. We also don't have a price for how much this optional extra will be. It is an extra. The RZ does not come standard in any configuration with the steer by wire system that you see here in front of me. Otherwise, in the interior of the car, everything is pretty much the same. The only thing I do wanna note is that the actual dashboard and cluster sit back a little bit further to give you some better visibility out of this Lexus RZ. So let's stick it in a drive and we'll show you guys how this works. So this is totally electronic. There is no mechanical connection at all to the wheels. Now you may be thinking, well, what if your battery dies for some reason while you're going down the highway? What if you have some sort of a failure? Well, Lexus has thought of that and they've got three backup batteries, one of which is in the dashboard here to give you functional steering if there is an emergency. So we do have some uh, backups here that do not run for any other reason but to save you in an emergency. So this yoke style wheel has pretty much the same sort of functionality that we have on our regular round steering wheel as far as buttons go. We have these touch sensitive buttons here to control our heads up display, cruise control function, volume knob, We've got a headlight switch as well as a dial to control our wipers when they are in auto mode here on the bottom right hand side. We've also got a turn signal over here, which it, it, it makes sense, you know, where it is. It doesn't click into place, but um, you know where it's at, it's in a nice reachable spot. Okay, so we're in drive and we have 150 degrees of steering angle both ways in this Lexus RZ. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that before I actually get out on the road. So that is full lock, and that is full lock to lock. That's it. That's all the steering angle you have with this RZ, and it makes sense because you never have to move your hands. You can keep your hands, just no matter where they are, you can keep them in the same spot no matter what. You don't have to do any uh, hand over hand maneuvering here with this car. So let's go ahead and steer. And this took me quite a bit of getting used to. They put us out in one of these cars earlier on in the day. And um, I don't know if I'm going to put in footage from that or not, but um, it's a little embarrassing driving this thing around the parking lot. And uh, I ran over a couple of cones. Oh, you got that cone again? You got it again. Because <laughs> you just don't expect it to be able to steer so fast. It's crazy. It's just full lock to lock instantaneously. So we can come around here now. Honestly, guys, after you drive this thing for like five minutes, it's it's fine. You really don't even think about it. What I will say though, is that I do really appreciate the fact that Lexus has this as an option because this would scare a lot of people away if you could only have this steer by wire system. All right. So we're gonna do a U-turn here at this light and you'll see that I don't even have to move my hands here to complete the U-turn. Actual materials here on the steering wheel, uh, they feel pretty good. I mean, the actual leather-ish part feels just about the same as it does on the regular wheel. 
The only thing I don't super love, we've got a lot of just scratchy flat plastic here at the bottom. Uh, luckily you don't really touch that, so it's not a huge deal. All right, you turn didn't have to rotate my hands. Yeah, that's pretty neat. The only thing I could see disadvantage-wise with this is if you're someone that likes to kind of rest your hand on the top of a steering wheel, obviously you don't have that choice here. Um, but I usually like to drive with two hands on the wheel, so uh, this is perfectly fine for me, honestly. And it kind of adds like a cool factor to this Lexus RZ. Like, it brings this interior to the next level because you look in here and you're like, what is this thing? <laughs> it's pretty sweet. I forgot where the turn signal was there. So Lexus is uh, pretty much leading on to that this steer by wire system is being debuted here in the RZ and we will be seeing it in some future models such as the Bev Sports Coupe, I believe it's called, the kind of LFA successor, if you will. Um, don't be surprised if you see a very similar steer by wire system in that car, which may have even less steering angle. As I said, 150 degrees lock to lock in this car um, each way, but you may see even less in a sportier rendition of this steer by wire system. It's also cool because you don't really feel any of the road imperfections with the steer by wire because it's all controlled by a computer, so there's no physical feedback to the steering. So, you know, in a normal car with a normal steering wheel, if you hit a pothole, it's possible it could jerk the steering wheel out of your hands, but in this car, there's nothing. You just float along and it's just, it's still. <laughs> so strange. But pretty, pr pretty, pretty neat. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm still taking it all in. Uh, oh, additionally, on this car, and the car that we were driving earlier didn't have it, this car has the dynamic sky option, which means if you hit this button, it turns that opaque, which is pretty neat. Man, this is just the U-turn machine. No thoughts about it at all. You just, and you're done. One thing you'll notice also is that this car does not have a camera rearview mirror, and that is because with the dynamic sky option, it glares off of the camera mirror and you can't see as well. So if you opt for this, you have to have a traditional mirror. At the moment, Lexus is working on a way to kind of remedy that, but uh, in this current time, this is your option. I'm gonna do one more lap. I was just gonna go back, but I wanna keep driving this. <laughs> All right, here we go, another U-turn. This is just the weirdest thing to think about. And then the only thing that's a little shocking and jarring with this is when you return back to center, you have to be careful. You can't jerk it back to center or else it will jerk you just because the wheels are moving so fast when you go back to center. You gotta slow yourself down a little bit. Otherwise though, I think I'm pretty dialed in with this now. Oh, another thing I failed to mention earlier is this RZ has what's called radiant heating. So below the dashboard, there's actually no glove box in this car. There's just nothing here. Um, you get a little bit more storage down here below the console, but it has radiant heating. So there's these things that radiate heat under the dashboard. And well, it's just like being next to a radiator in your house. Um, if you live in an old house or if you have like a space heater or something, you'll know exactly what this feels like as opposed to having the car actually blow heat, which it will do as well. Um, but for your legs and below the dash, it, it, it radiates heat and you can actually feel it. If you touch under the dashboard, you can feel it getting hot. One last thing before we go back, this car is a luxury trim. The other car that we're driving today is a premium trim. So this one is a little bit higher end. It's about $5,000 more if you don't factor in the steer by wire. Like I said, we don't have a price for this yet. So this one as tested is about 68 grand. Um, and the other car that we were driving earlier is about 62 grand. So a small price difference, um, but this one's got a much nicer interior. It's got a lot of micro suede and other things in it. So, uh, <laughs> I have to remind myself this is just a first impressions drive. We don't need to have a full review, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed thus far and I'll go ahead and get back to myself now in the 
round steering wheel car. Settling in here on the highway now in the RZ450E and uh, pretty normal looking Lexus steering wheel buttons here that take you to your heads up display. We saw this again introduced in the NX, carried over to the RX and now carried over again to the RZ. These work just like they do in any other Lexus with this new steering wheel. You can set your cruise control from here, you can adjust your heads up display and a number of other things. You can also set custom buttons here. It looks like we've got a couple blanks here right now. You can adjust your following distance for your cruise control. I like to have mine set at the closest. All right, adaptive cruise mode on. We've got two buttons here uh, for lane keep assist and adaptive cruise. Lane tracing, excuse me, and Alexis likes to call it lane tracing. And then over here, we can control our, um, our songs, our audio that we're listening to, our volumes over here on the right, and we can also answer and reject phone calls and use voice command from this side. So a number of different things that you can do with these uh, buttons. Most of the time these are okay. The only time they get frustrating is if you are in a bit of a curvy section and you are doing quite a bit of steering. They're very easy to bump with the palms of your hands. And of course we've seen this with the NX and the RX, but it's certainly worth reiterating that you will still have that here with the RZ. Another thing we should definitely touch on while we're on the highway is the quietness of this Lexus RZ. And I don't know how well this translates through to the camera and through the audio, but this thing is pretty dang quiet. The car with the 18 inch wheels is quieter, of course, but even with these 20s, I'm quite impressed with how quiet they're able to make this thing. And um, NVH has certainly been considered here in the RZ, but as a Lexus should, it is still nice and quiet. So now that we're off the highway, let's get you guys some more driving impressions on what this thing is like mechanically. Well, the biggest thing for me and the most disappointing thing is that there is no one pedal driving in this Lexus RZ. As you can see, we have paddle shifters on the steering wheel to adjust our regen braking. There are four settings. You can dial it up with the up paddle and you can dial it down to make it more aggressive with the down paddle. There are four settings and uh, well, none of it is super aggressive. I'll go ahead and speed up here and let off and let you guys see our full regen. Plus we're gonna be turning up here, so we'll have to slow down anyways. This is full regen. It's okay, but um, no one pedal driving here in the RZ and that's probably the biggest disappointment about this car for me is that I can't drive it with one pedal. That's what draws me to EVs is being able to use one pedal drive. So definitely disappointing that we don't have that here. But it's okay because it makes up for it in other bits of driving dynamics. I touched a little bit on the steering earlier and we'll be able to demonstrate that up here once we get into some twistier roads. The steering is very communicative. It feels very nice. The brake pedal feel is also pretty good. You always have to use that brake pedal since we don't have one pedal drive. So you get used to using it. And um, it's certainly better than some other competitors. It doesn't feel as artificial as something like a Mercedes EQ car would. So we'll give it a pass in that respect. Of course, this is not a sports car by any means, so we don't have incredible brake pedal feel, but for a car in this class, I would certainly say it's on the upper end um, of satisfaction. Also looking down here at the cluster, it's a pretty outdated looking display. Um, it's just a very small screen there in the middle with just one circular gauge. You can see we have a power display on the left. When I put my foot down, you can see that go up and we have a charge meter right below it. On the right hand side, we have how much battery we have left. We're at about half a charge right now and it looks like we've got 60 miles of range left, but it would be nice to have a full digital cluster in this car. This is not unique to the premium. The luxury has this same cluster. So a little bit disappointing in that respect. At least we have a good infotainment screen and a very nice um, bright setup here as well as a heads up display. So, you know, not as important as a car that didn't have a big impressive screen or a heads up display, but still Lexus, come on, give us something better here on our cluster. Okay, let's go ahead into sport mode. We've got a bit of piped in noise. You can hear that. You'll get that in just about every mode except range. Range mode is as silent as it gets. Otherwise though, you have that uh, spaceship noise that comes in through the speakers. Of course, everything sharpens up in sport mode. The steering gets a little bit heavier. You've only got two modes for the steering. You can also set up a custom mode. 
Here I am trying to do some more regen, though I cannot. Yeah, this thing is plenty quick. It will get up and go. The good thing about electric cars, of course, and you all know this, but everything happens immediately. Everything's instantaneous. So all 321 pound-feet of torque comes on like that, if I can snap properly. Um, so it definitely doesn't feel slow. For suspension, we just have regular McPherson-style struts up front and a multi-link rear suspension. As I mentioned earlier, we have staggered wheels. We've got a 235 up front, a 255 out back, 8-inch wheel up front, 9.5-inch wheel in back. So from an aesthetic standpoint, it makes this thing certainly look sportier, and it makes it handle quite nice as well. These tires are a pretty good balance between being sticky and also quiet, so I agree with the tire choice that they have chosen here for the Lexus RZ. Lexus has split the difference really well here with the RZ in my opinion. It's still really comfortable, it's still really quiet, it's still pretty soft, but uh, if you want a boogie, it will definitely boogie. All right, we're gonna do a quick zero to 60. We're in sport mode. Struggling for traction. And there you go. Go ahead and time that out in the video. My butt dyno is telling me that it's about six seconds, maybe a little bit slower, six and a half, seven seconds. And to give this car credit, it's wet. We were very much struggling for traction there. That front motor makes a little bit more power than the rear, so it's spinning its wheels searching for traction. And um, also this thing is at about a 40% charge, so you're not gonna have full power um, at such a low charge. Beautiful SL. Ooh, and an AMG GT. Ah, yes. So now that we're in a bit of a slower section, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is, of course, the range on this Lexus RZ. Certain other competitors in this class, we'll just go ahead and call them out. Tesla Model Y, Volvo XC40 Recharge, Audi e-tron, uh, Jaguar I-Pace. All of these cars are gonna be up towards that 300 mile range. And even with the 18 inch wheels in premium form, the most range you're gonna get out of the Lexus RZ is 220. If you go for the luxury or anything with the 20 inch wheels, you only get 196 miles of range. So I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing, but you have to consider this vehicle entering into that class. If that is the class that these engineers are targeting from Lexus, then you think that they would want to give this thing more than 200-ish miles of range. I can understand, of course, range Range is tricky, right? Because you have some people that buy their electric cars just to drive around town, just to go short distances. And for somebody like that, the Lexus RZ is perfect. But if you're somebody that wants to go on long road trips, I don't know that this would necessarily be the right EV for you. You could certainly do it with the 18 inch wheels, 220 miles of range, you can charge at 150 kilowatts, so you could do it. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer and it's not gonna be as convenient as something like a Tesla that has more range and a more convenient charging network. We are having quite a few EA stations pop up around the country. Of course, in California, it's quite a bit easier. They're on every corner, but uh, just something to consider. And that'll just about wrap it up for us here in the Lexus RZ. This is a pretty good product here from Lexus. Um, I definitely came into this, admittedly, with pretty low expectations, and I'm happy to be happy here with this Lexus RZ. So overall, the only kind of things that I don't really love about this thing are the cluster, the lack of one pedal driving, and the range is, eh, it's not the biggest deal in the world because, of course, you could argue that this EV is for different things than the Tesla Model Y and the um, other competitors. But, you know, if it were up to me, I'd probably give it a little more. It's just so close. There are so many things where it's just so close um, to being like the perfect uh, EV in this segment. So we'll leave it at that. And I hope you all were able to gain some insight here to the new Lexus RZ. 
and see what it is like behind the wheel. Let's do one last walk around and then that will wrap it up for us today. Cool guys, well, appreciate you hanging out with me here in Southern California, though it is quite cloudy. At least we have this Ether uh, Lexus RZ to give us some simulated blue skies. And I'm not gonna walk in that because that is mud. So we'll go back around this way. But that'll wrap it up for us today. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to those. That'll be it. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.